Welcome, everyone. Welcome to Learn with the Expert. We're so excited to have you here with us this evening. As we are waiting for everyone to join, we would love to have you introduce yourself in the chat, share where you're from, your role or your grade level. Click on the chat icon in the lower right-hand corner to open up the chat and share your introductions. Today, we are joined by Casey Escola from Mind Yeti, who will share how to gain back instructional time by establishing a practice of mindfulness in your classroom. We will also share a sampling of Seesaw lessons with you for free that make it quick and easy to implement these mindfulness practices right away. So we see some introductions coming in from the chat. Hi, Nicole, second grade, New Jersey. Hello, Sh uh, Sherry from Oklahoma. Hi, Crystal, kindergarten from Maine. Hello, Kelly, welcome, pre-K. Hi, Elizabeth, good to have you with us today. See some people from Mexico joining. All right, well, welcome everyone. Just a few housekeeping items before we dive in. If you have any questions during the session that you would like Casey to answer, please click on the Q&A tab and ask them there. This just ensures that we um, don't miss them. If you have um, any questions that go unanswered, we will reach out to you and answer those questions after the webinar. Any other comments or ideas or reactions you can put in the chat tab so that all of our participants can view them. So to open up these tabs, you'll see a little uh, chat icon in the lower right corner of your screen. Just tap on that and then you will have the option to click between the chat, the Q&A and the handout tabs. The handout tab is um, includes key takeaways from today's sessions. Uh, this session is being recorded. A link to the recording will be shared in a follow-up email 24 to 48 hours after the session is complete. So be on the lookout for, for that. So you all have shared who you are in the chat. So let's go ahead and introduce our team. My name is Mia Leonard. I am the training and professional development specialist here um, at Seesaw. So um, I facilitate um, PDs and webinars like this one and create resources in, uh, for um, to support teachers and school districts in implementing Seesaw in their classroom. I am based in Chicago, Illinois. So I saw some Illinois people in the chat. Shout out to you all. Um, um, before joining the Seesaw team, I actually taught kindergarten uh, in Chicago Public Schools for 10 years. So shout out to all of my early childhood educators that I saw in the chat as well. Now let's meet our expert. Casey Escola is a high, is highly skilled in community engagement, policy analysis, and positive communication, but she believes her SEL superpower is empathy. Currently, Casey serves as the Associate Program Manager for the Innovation Team at the Committee for Children, where she supports projects that embed social-emotional learning into kids' experiences, both in and out of school. Committee for Children is the creator of the award-winning mindfulness program for kids called Mind Yeti. In past roles, Casey has researched how best to build empathy in key social and cognitive developmental stages. She has also studied mindfulness as a tool for both uh, group cohesion and individual self-esteem. She believes the world would be a little happier and a little kinder with mindfulness. Welcome, Casey. We are so excited to have you join us. Thank you so much, Mia. I'm so happy to be here, and I'm so happy to be talking with all of you about one of my all-time favorite topics, mindfulness, and how to build a calmer, kinder, more focused classroom. Um, I also have been a classroom teacher at the preschool level, and I've had all kinds of experiences both in and out of school, supporting mindfulness, supporting social emotional learning development. And I'm just so excited to have this opportunity to bring all of these experiences together and to talk with you today about mindfulness in the classroom. 
Well, we are excited to hear um, all of this amazing information that you have to share with us. Our job as educators is to not only build students' academic potential, but also to create a safe space, one where all of our students feel welcome, accepted, and can learn. So today, Casey will share research and strategies and resources that will help you in creating a calm, focused, and kind classroom. You will leave this session with Mind Yeti lessons that teach mindfulness and help students pay attention to things as they are right now with kindness and curiosity. So we're going to start out our conversation today by really understanding what is mindfulness as a practice and how that practice can improve our experiences in the classroom. Um, first of all, we have a video that will provide some context about mindfulness and the Mind Yeti program. What is mindfulness anyway? When you're doing Mind Yeti, you're practicing mindfulness. Mindfulness is paying attention to things as they are right now. Things like your breath, body, or the sounds around you. With kindness and curiosity. It's also noticing thoughts, feelings, and sensations as they're happening. Mindfulness is also being kind to others and yourself, even when you're having a hard day. According to scientists who study the brain, practicing mindfulness can help you get better at calming down, focusing, and connecting with other people. And all of those things are pretty important, both at home and at school. Thank you so much for playing that video, Mia. Um, so we're going to be discussing mindfulness in the classroom specifically. What is it and how does it benefit both students and educators? Because something that I find really impactful and empowering about mindfulness is that it doesn't just benefit the kids, but the adults in the school setting as well. So we're also going to ask ourselves how practicing mindfulness, even for just one or two minutes a day, can help create this focused, calm, and kind classroom. One of my favorite statistics is this. Um, for every one minute of explicit SEL instruction, classroom teachers can gain back 12 minutes of academic lesson time. So if you can imagine how being more mindful, more present, more self-aware might benefit your life and daily stresses, just imagine what it can do for kids in your classroom. Mindfulness is like any skill. It takes practice and time to grow. But incorporating mindfulness into classrooms can have real effects and lasting effects on student outcomes, a positive classroom environment and educator wellness. This type of explicit social emotional learning instruction like the Mind Yeti sessions have helped teachers in the classroom gain back time because it allows the students to take care of themselves and to be more focused and present and aware. So we're starting with the basics. We've already watched our wonderful little video, but I wanna dig in a bit further. What is mindfulness? Mindfulness at its simplest is awareness that arises through paying attention non-judgmentally to what is happening in the present moment. Sometimes that looks like carving five or 10 minutes out of your day to take slow and deep breaths in peaceful silence. Maybe that's what you imagine when you picture someone meditating or practicing mindfulness. But it can also mean enjoying a really delicious bite of food or pausing to be aware of the feeling of sunlight on your skin. Sometimes it even means taking stock of a bad day or a negative feeling and just acknowledging and sitting in that moment of discomfort. A mindful pause can take place at any time, in any setting, and with every age group. So now that we know what mindfulness is, I'd like to start our conversation today with a brief pause. I don't know about you, but I think we all lead very busy and hectic lives, and we've chosen to come together for this moment from all over the country, from all over the world. I'm here in Seattle on a rarely sunny day, and I just would love to be present and aware of that decision that brought us to this moment together. So we're going to take a quick mindful pause. 
I'd invite you to close your eyes if you feel comfortable and then take a long, slow, deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. We're gonna do another one and let this one be the deepest breath that you've taken all day today. In through your nose and out through your mouth. Be aware of the temperature in your room, the seat beneath you and the sounds in the background. One more deep breath and congratulations. We've all just experienced a little mindful moment together. It's really as simple as that. So we've just been benefited from one simple mindful moment, um, a few deep breaths and the awareness of the room and the space around us. And so when children practice mindfulness, they are able to pay greater attention during lesson time, self-regulate appropriately during their independent time, build stronger empathy and social emotional skills and improve their overall well-being just from a few deep present breaths. Practicing mindfulness doesn't just help students in a social way. You can probably imagine how being able to be more calm and more present and maybe a little bit kinder would help them in their friendships, relationships at school, relationships with adults in the building. But research shows that students who receive direct social emotional instruction and support like this type of mindful practice can experience an 11% gain in standardized testing outcomes. And this is because they have the tools and the capacity to really focus on those tests and to improve their test scores. Mindfulness is this low barrier and low stress practice that can be as simple as sitting for a moment in a state of self-awareness like we just did. But sometimes even carving that one moment out of a busy day feels like this huge, enormous, unachievable task. So today we're going to go over the ways that Mind Yeti Sessions, which is a program, you know, built to become as easy as possible to use and implement, can help to build this calm, focused, and kind classroom. First, we'll begin by discussing how to create a calm classroom and the benefits of doing so. All right, so we're gonna talk about a calm classroom. In the world of social emotional learning, you've probably heard a lot about this term emotional regulation, which is the ability to regulate one's thoughts, emotions, and behaviors effectively in all different situations. Emotional regulation is about more than getting students to just be quiet or sit still or calm down when they're feeling overwhelmed. When a student has a calm mind, they're more able to focus and pay attention, absorb and recall information, think critically and succeed academically. And just as importantly, when a student is appropriately regulated and in a positive emotional environment, they will be more self-aware about their own struggles and therefore capable to seek out the help that they need. Mind Yeti gives students space to take a deep breath and to regulate their emotions. Big positive emotions. We all know kids who are so happy that they have a hard time regulating and those negative emotions so disappointed or frustrated that they have a hard time feeling calm. Students who are able to self-regulate are more likely to stay positive when faced with a challenge, acknowledge their strengths and limitations, and set and monitor goals. Calm classroom environments are spaces in which students have the ability to regulate their emotions, even in stressful situations. With Mind Yeti, students practice these skills by sitting quietly, breathing deeply, and making themselves aware of their bodies and their feelings. Building that mindful practice helps to create and maintain a calm classroom. Thank you so much, Casey, for sharing. Mind Yeti builds emotional regulation skills and capacity in order uh, for teachers to um, show students how to do this. It's important that we model and practice these skills in front of our students. As you are modeling, make sure you narrate your own experience. Demonstrate those calm down techniques, such as slow breathing, 
counting and positive self-talk. We will be sharing uh, three lessons with you at the end of this session um, that will help to support building a calm classroom. Next, Casey is going to talk about another important part of learning, creating a focused classroom. So as teachers, as educators, as former educators, we can all imagine the wonderful benefits of having a more focused classroom. But how can we really define being focused at school? Um, I found a definition that I really liked, which is that focus is the thinking skill that allows students to begin a task without procrastinating and then maintain their attention and effort until that task is complete, which I think is a very excellent learning skill we all want to impart to our students. It's not at all hard to imagine how this ability will help students succeed academically and socially. Focused attention is especially important in learning environments during academic lesson time, test taking, school and classroom transitions between lunch to recess, recess back to the classroom, um, elective rooms, uh, hallway time. And focus can even be seen as a restorative gesture, which means pausing in the middle of the day to ask yourself, how am I and what do I need right now? If you don't have the skills to focus on the answer, then you might not be able to seek the help um, that could move your day in a better direction. Mindful practice offers an opportunity for students to practice their ability to focus on the task at hand. All skills, like I said earlier, from basic and interpersonal skills like sharing and having a conversation to complex and technical ones like math problems or different school you know, curricula and events require practice to make perfect. By slowing down, breathing deeply, and paying attention to particular cues or elements of their surroundings, students are honing the skill of focus. By giving students opportunities to practice and see mindfulness in action, you empower them to focus when it counts, during academic lesson time, before a big test, during classroom transitions, or when other challenges arise. This helps to support a focused classroom. Focusing attention looks different in different situations. How can you help to support a focused, mindful classroom? You can model mindful moments. Just how we said that modeling mindfulness for a calm classroom is important, modeling focus is important for students as well. So if you are presenting in front of your classroom and there's something that requires a lot of focus or attention, maybe you would say, this is an opportunity for me to focus. I'm going to need to put on my thinking cap to solve this problem or to remember this answer from last week's chapter in the book that we read. Practicing mindfulness before challenging transitions or potentially stressful situations is another great opportunity to recall a mind yeti session or a moment when we felt more calm and focused and put that feeling into the present moment. And then you can always ask students to pause and reflect, what do I need right now? And really have them listen to their bodies so that they can focus on the answer. So in addition to doing all of those amazing things that Casey discussed, um, modeling that focus for your students, we are also sharing three Mind Yeti lessons particularly designed to help students with um, that practice of focusing in the classroom. So we will be sharing at the end of the session these three lessons with you. All right, for the next part of our session, Casey is going to share strategy number three, creating a calm classroom. So skill number three, creating a kind classroom, um, is all about compassion. And so this is one of my favorite elements of the Mind Yeti program, building a kind classroom. And we're talking about compassion, which is defined as empathy in action. Sometimes when we think about kindness, and this is something I have done a lot of 
of research and work into. But when we think about kindness, it gets reduced down into this idea of just being nice. Um, be nice to your friends, be nice to your teacher, be nice to yourself. But there's actually so much more to it than that. Kindness can mean all kinds of things. It can mean compassion towards others, like in our Mind Yeti video, um, helping out a friend. It can mean compassion towards yourself um, when you make a mistake or, or need to do better. And it can mean, you know, feeling and exhibiting that empathy, which is the ability to put yourself into someone else's shoes and really feel and understand their emotions. So why is kindness important in classrooms? Any person, adult, child, teenager, who's ever spent time in a classroom knows that kindness is important. Um, mindfulness really supports students' ability to get along well with others. And there is a ton of research in the field that proves this. Um, when we're more grounded and aware of the present moment, we're more able to practice all of those levels of compassion that I listed. Having a mindful, reflective, and non-reactive state of listening will help you respond to others and helps us to form and maintain positive relationships. So students who are more able to share with and help others, practice self-compassion when experiencing hardships or setbacks, and appreciate others' perspectives, are more likely to build and support a kind classroom. So we're going to try it. Mind Yeti builds empathy and compassion. Mia is about to share three Mind Yeti sessions that we've selected that help build and foster these skills. But I just want to repeat those three facets of kindness that go a little bit deeper than just being nice. There's compassion towards others, and mindfulness has been proven to promote pro-social behavior. So behavior that supports the, the good of the group, self-compassion, Mind Yeti sessions support growth mindset and the student's ability to overcome obstacles and to be kind to themselves, um, and empathy. Mindful practice helps students understand others' perspectives, which helps to build a more cohesive and kind classroom environment. Thank you, Casey. We will be sharing a, a total of three lessons that are focused on kindness. Um, but right now, I am going to walk you through one of those three. Seesaw offers um, a subscription to standards aligned, ready to teach lessons that support students with the skills that they need the most, including these very critical mindfulness skills that Casey just discussed. So today we are going to offer you a sampling of these lessons for free. Um, as we shared before, Mind Yeti is an award-winning mindfulness program for kids, and we partner with Mind Yeti to bring you these lessons to use right inside of Seesaw. So now we're going to explore one specific Mind Yeti, Mind Yeti, excuse me, lesson in Seesaw that helps to create um, a kind classroom by supporting students um, in sowing seeds of kindness. All right, so we're actually going to jump right into um, a lesson. So here I am in the Growing Kindness Mind Yeti lesson. I have previously assigned this lesson and I'm in as a student so that you can see the student experience. All Mind Yeti, Yeti lessons have three parts, as you can see here on the homepage, uh, a listen or watch, a try, and a connect. So we're going to begin by taking a listen to the podcast for this episode. Welcome to Mind Yeti. Did you know that just thinking kind thoughts about other people can change the way you feel? Let's give it a try and see how it feels. So first, get into your Yeti body. You can close your eyes if it helps. Take a deep breath in and let it go. Oh. 
Imagine your pocket is full of seeds, the kind that will grow into beautiful flowers wherever you plant them. Kind wishes are just like these seeds. You can grow a beautiful world just by planting these seeds of kindness. First, start with you. Imagine giving yourself one of these kindness seeds. And as you do, give yourself a kind wish. Say silently to yourself, I want you to be happy. Imagine that seed growing into something beautiful. Okay, now picture your very best friend. All right, so we're gonna come back together. Sorry to bring you out of that calming session, but we just wanted to play a snippet so that you can feel, um, get a feel for what the episodes are, are like. I know I feel more calm and relaxed and ready to begin to sow my seeds of kindness. So after listening to the audio about kindness, students use the pen within Seesaw to share how they are feeling after listening. So I feel calm. So I'm going to use the pen to share, and then I'm going to go over, over to the next section. Now, students move on to the try section. And um, this is where they have the opportunity to put the mindfulness skill that they were just focused on into practice. Just like seeds, kindness can grow you can help to grow beautiful, a beautiful world filled with kindness by planting seeds in everyone around you. Planting kindness seeds helps to grow and create a beautiful world. Planting a kindness seed can be done by passing kindness to those around you. So for this try activity, students are encouraged to share a kindness seed with someone nearby and use the seesaw tools to share how they feel after sharing that kindness seed. So I'm gonna select the pin and I'm going to draw here how I'm feeling. And then I'm gonna tap the microphone and record. My heart is happy. Students can play that audio back and listen. Once they're done, they're going to move on to the connect activity. And this activity is designed to be completed with a partner or a family member in order to deepen the learning. Kindness seeds can grow a forest that covers the earth. One way you can spread kindness is to try to plant a kindness seed outside of your school, maybe at a grocery store or while you're riding the bus. There is no wrong time to spread kindness. With a partner or a family member, now students discuss and then they share in Seesaw one, um, what they can do to spread kindness outside of school. And once they're done with that complete activity, they are going to click that green check mark to post it to their journal. All right, now that we've had a chance to explore a lesson and to listen to um, the mindfulness audio, we are going to be sharing as promised um, the handout with the strategies and the links to the free Seesaw lessons um, that promote a calm, focused, and kind classroom. So simply click the link and save it to your My Library. If you need more basics on how to use Seesaw, check out our training page at web.seesaw.me. You can find that handout in the handout tab. And we will drop the link to our training site um, in the chat. 
Mindfulness helps students pay attention to things as they are right now with kindness and curiosity. This improves emotional regulation, self-acceptance, executive function, and those pro-social behaviors that Casey was talking about, that compassion, that helping others. Students follow a guided mindfulness session, then they complete interactive activities that deepen their understanding of the theme. We are also including a Mind Yeti educational guide to help you get the most out of each Mind Yeti session. Mind Yeti can be used to start your day um, or a lesson to begin a lesson. It can be used after students come back from recess um, or at any other time during the day that you feel your students can benefit from a mindfulness activity. Mind Yeti can be used whole class or in small groups or even be assigned to individual students. Yeah, and I'll just jump in here to say that before the pandemic, my role looked much different and I was visiting classrooms really all over the country and getting to see Mind Yeti in action, which was so much fun. And there's truly nothing cuter, I think in the entire world than seeing a group of you know, first graders or second graders or kindergartners sit down and kind of ready their Yeti body, which means to take a deep breath and become present in the, the given moment. But this, you know, Mind Yeti, I've seen it used really all over school. It In library times as an opportunity to calm down after a busy transition, um, in calm down corners in classrooms where students might opt in for um, a little quieter space, re recognizing the need to, to calm their emotions and self-regulate. Um, even in, in front office environments where students come in upset and they need, you know, a deep breath with Mind Yeti, then they're able to more productively um, take the conversation forward. So Mind Yeti and mindfulness really is not delegated to a specific time of day or a specific student, but is something that everyone can benefit from. And I'm just going to sum up by saying that from our very, you know, beginning of our conversation today, uh, we've talked about how to use Mind Yeti to create this calm, focused, kind classroom. Mindful practice helps students feel calm by supporting their ability to regulate themselves and their emotions. It helps students be more focused by giving them the tools to build and maintain attention. And mindfulness creates a kinder classroom by giving teachers and students the opportunity to practice and model compassion, self-compassion, and empathy. But like I said at the top, mindfulness is wonderful for adults too. I Each one of these bullet points is a summary of pages and pages of published research that I found um, and have, you know, contributed to about the the power of mindfulness. And this isn't just for adults living their own independent daily lives, but specifically for educators who practice mindfulness with their students. And a lot of times when I had conversations with teachers who were using Mind Yeti in their classrooms, they'd say, it's so great to have just five minutes to prepare for the next lesson, or this was the perfect time where I could, you know, leave the students with student teacher and run out of the room to grab something from the copier. And I completely understand that as a former educator, I know exactly how busy and stressful these days can be, but it's my professional advice to take the mindful pause with your students. Not only does it help them practice and hone the skills that Mind Yeti is offering because they see an adult modeling that focus, that calm and that kindness, but there's a huge range of benefits for adults in, in school settings who are really taking the time to build that mindful practice for themselves. So Mind Yeti builds these skills and offers these supports, not just for students, but for adults too. And when teachers participate in the Mind Yeti sessions, they not only model the mindful behaviors for students, but they experience that calm self-compassion and focus that mindfulness offers. Research shows that in sharing a mindful practice with students can help strengthen those teacher to student relationships, and it helps improve the professional experience of educators and improve their own classroom and career experiences and goals. So I love to end with a quote, 
And today we're ending with two. <laughs> I couldn't decide between. Um, but as you introduce and build up a mindful practice with your students, you can reflect on this framing, which is one that I love. Mindfulness is a way of befriending ourselves and our experience. And I love that because it really does show that seed of kindness, that the first seed of kindness you offer is the one to yourself. And then you take that and you really get a chance to be aware of your experience non-judgmentally wherever you are in that present moment. Um, that's that's where you are. And you get to have that that kinder relationship with your own self and your own thoughts. And as we end or I end on this slide today, um, I just invite you to remember the mindful moment we took at the beginning of today's presentation. Did it make you feel more present and attentive or more grounded and secure? Did it make you more aware of the stresses you were experiencing throughout your day? I know I was a bit nervous before this presentation and even taking those few deep breaths all collective as a group um, helped me kind of register that and also be present for what the next, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes would bring. And so I hope that a few minutes of mindfulness can help you to feel more rooted in the present moment and more rooted to yourself. As this quote says by Eckhart Tolle, wherever you are, be there totally. Thank you so much, Casey, for sharing the importance of mindfulness in the classroom and how teachers can easily begin to practice uh, with these Mind Yeti lessons that we are sharing and the benefits for our educators as well. So at this time, we would love to take some time to answer questions from participants. So we are going to throw some questions your way. All right, here's our first question. What are some key sources uh, for scientific findings, such as the quote that you shared in the beginning, one minute of mindfulness equals 12 minutes of classwork? Let me find it. I have it pulled up right here. There's multiple sources, um, multiple sources that say that explicit SEL instruction, um, like a, a social emotional learning curricula lesson, like mindful practice, taking that time to hone those skills earns back academic instructional value because of fewer classroom disruptions and things like that. Um, I have the sources pulled up and someone might be able to share it in the, the chat as well, but there are, I'm not sure how interesting it is to hear me list the names of academic journals, but, um, but multiple from 1976, 1994, and 2015. Um, researchers Berliner, Wang, Hartel, Wahlberg, and Kunin have all found that classroom management is through the roof with these types of interventions. Um, and this number, the 12 minutes, is a bit of a, a meta study that's combined the findings of all of those researchers. And if you'd like more specific details about it, please feel free to let me know. <laughs> I can get nerdy talking about um, research for too long. All right, we have another question for you. What is the most suitable age to start children, um, to start mindfulness with younger children? I think that's a great question. And the Mind Yeti sessions um, specifically are between three and five minutes long. So what I've seen and what I would recommend is that if your child has the attention span to sit still for that amount of time, then Mind Yeti might be a, a great tool for them. I don't think that there's at 18 months, um, now you've entered the mindfulness stage, but you know, some kids on the younger side of the, the preschool spectrum are ready and would get a lot out of um, a short Mind Yeti session. Or if I think even students younger than that or children younger than that would be able to really feel the benefits of practicing those deep breaths and being aware of their body and aware of the present moment. Um, and we have some Mind Yeti sessions that are, are really focused on feeling calm, like the three that will be shared today. Um, I've heard of parents using those to help student or to help their children uh, drift off to sleep, even if they're on the younger side of the spectrum. So 
that's a helpful tip if that's something that your child enjoys. Thank you. Another question, how do you feel about um, using it with testing for um, those essential testing grades three through five? I think that that's a really prime age to use it because these are students who have honed some of those executive functioning skills in the first few years of school. The forming or formal school environment has given them an opportunity to, you know, really practice sitting still, behaving appropriately, you know, uh, not procrastinating, all the different things that are necessary to be successful academically. But that doesn't mean that we ever grow out of, you know, the the nerves that are surrounding big school tests or any type of testing. So in grades three to five, I think it's a really appropriate developmental age to start or to build in an extra five minutes for a Mind Yeti session before taking a big test or taking any test that the student might feel nervous about. Um, and it'll just kind of help students to feel that sense of calm and focus. And like I said, the research is really there that students who are able to emotionally regulate and feel that sense of focus will be more likely to recall information, which will help them in their test scores. Perfect. And before we jump into the next question, I did see some questions in the chat about the lessons, the Seesaw lessons, and how you can find them. So we will be sharing a handout. The handout has been shared in the handout tab. If you click, you will be able to download that PDF, which contains um, nine lessons, um, three for uh, creating a calm classroom, three for creating a kind classroom, and three for creating a focused classrooms. Although Seesaw lessons are subscription-based, you are being provided these lessons for free. So all you have to do is click on that link um, that you find in that handout, and you will save these lessons to your My Library tab, and they will be yours to keep. So once you yeah in the handout, you click on that specific lesson, you are going to tap save activity, and those lessons will save to your My Library tab. And then you can assign those to your students, um, in all the students in your class, individual students, um, or groups of students as well. All right, let's go ahead and take that next question. Okay, so Mary says that I play play group children. I teach a play group children. Can you give me some advice on how to apply this to children um, at the ages of twelve months to three years old? And I think you talked a little bit about this. <laughs> um, when I did. <laughs> All I'll say, um, just to round out what I had said before about younger kids, is that. There's a big difference between a 12 month old's uh, attention span and a three year old's attention span. This might be something that, um, if this is a, a full group activity, it's more appropriate for the two to three year olds to listen to a Mind Yeti session while the 12 month olds are, you know, entertained by a co teacher or something like that. Or um, just because I think at 12 months, um, in my experience, it's a bit young for them to follow the prompts. And since it is all about kind of being able to focus, even that's a little distracting maybe for the older kids. So um, having it be an optional activity or part of a calm down part of the classroom where, you know, or play space where other types of calming toys and experiences are, um, is something that, you know, the older kids can do as a group and then the younger kids can join as they feel it's appropriate. All right, another question. Is there a Mind Yeti developmental sequence past uh, K through two, like three through 12? We currently don't have any Mind Yeti sessions that are specifically geared towards older kids. But like I said, I do think that um, Mind Yeti sessions can be used with older students. I'd say that appropriateness level is up to your own judgment, but I've seen it used really successfully in fifth and even sixth grade classrooms, again, for that kind of mindful pause between stressful transitions or before tests. Um, 
the biggest complaint from the older students is that they think it seems a little babyish, which nobody, anybody who spent time with a sixth grader knows that that is their kryptonite. They don't want anything too babyish. So it would just have to be, you know, at your discretion. But right now, I think the prime developmental age group for Mind Yeti sessions is that, you know, pre-K to third grade. And if you stretch it a little bit, you know, higher or older um, by really framing it as a tool that they can use for their, you know, their test taking abilities or their emotional regulation and things like that, um, then I think that that's, that's an appropriate way to do it. And I've seen that be successful. Thank you. Okay, another question. All right, we keep them coming. So can you do a practical in the class example you would do in a mindfulness mindfulness moment with kinder kids? Um, I mean, how you bring them to the mat, words you would say, et cetera. Sure. Um, something that I've noticed in this type of young classroom is to let students stay where they feel comfortable. Um, obviously, if they're they're not being disruptive. Um, I'd encourage all the kids to come down to the mat because we're going to have, you know, a mind Yeti moment or we're going to take a minute um, to sit in our Yeti bodies. And then if some students really don't feel comfortable sitting on the floor, they can sit at their desk and close their eyes, but um, try to bring everyone around, you know, have their own square space and then ask them to close their eyes and to think about the session at hand, turn the lights down and play the Mind Yeti clip. Like I said, these are uh, about three to five minutes long. So it's not a very long time. And even though it does take practice for the students to really understand the expectations of what their um, what these mindful moments look like, you can frame that before your first Mind Yeti session and then you know, sit and model with them uh, what it looks like to be mindful to take these deep breaths. Some of the Mind Yeti prompts ask them to stretch their arms out or um, kind of stretch their necks up. And so as you follow along with these prompts, then at the end, you can ask them how they feel, like what's a, just like how the seesaw um, lessons really guide you through these next prompts about how do you feel? Do you feel kinder? Do you feel lighter? Do you feel heavier? Do you feel happier? And kind of encourage that conversation so that the next time you do a Mind Yeti session, you can say, remember how last time we felt so much calmer, so much happier after we spent a few minutes in our Yeti bodies? Let's try it again. And then you can build that skill from there. Yes, that modeling and that explicit and repeated practice of that, mm -hmm. that skill is definitely important. Okay, this question is for me. <laughs> yes, so um, these lessons are shared in the handout that um, you can access in the handout tab. So we'll go ahead and share with you how uh, one more time how to um, get those lessons from that handout. So that is a clickable PDF. Um, so you should be able to click on each one of those lessons. And we'll bring that up for you in just one second. There we are. So here is the handout that we shared in the handout tab. So you have to do this for each one of these individual lessons. Seesaw lessons is subscription based. Um, however, these Mind Yeti lessons we are sharing with you um, for free. So um, once you click on a lesson, so any one of those lessons that's linked in the handout, you just tap on that. And then you are going to click save activity. Um, you may need to sign into your existing Seesaw account first. Um, but after you sign in, you click the link, you click save, you'll notice that there is that activity now. It appears right in your My Library tab in your Seesaw account. You can click on that activity. I saw another question in the chat asking, how do we know um, which lesson is centered around kindness? Um, which centers around um, 
calmness. So we did list those out in the PDF. However, if you open up uh, that lesson, you'll see here that um, that collection overview, which overviews that lesson for you. It tells you how to use it in the classroom, what that focus skill is as well and what standards that lesson align with. So you will find all that information there. You can even, if you scroll back up, you can tap on view as a student before you assign that lesson to your students and you can click through the pages of that lesson and you can listen to either that audio or watch the video and take a look at all of the activities before assigning it to your students to make sure that this is the right activity uh, for your students. All right. Okay, another question. Do you have any tips on how to, I'm sorry, let's see, do breathing exercises? Oh, um, if your classroom is wearing a mask. So those mindfulness and those breathing exercises while wearing a mask. Mm, that's a very good question. Um, I, like I said, a lot of my in-person classroom experience with students doing Mind Yeti was pre-pandemic. Uh, if any student ever feels uncomfortable breathing deeply with their mask on, then obviously I would say not to do that. Um, this could be something that's done outside if possible. Um, I will say that almost every Mind Yeti session I've ever listened to, which is all of them that I can think of, do have those breathing deeply prompts. So if it doesn't feel safe or feasible in your classroom, um, because of the masks, then that's something that you would definitely have to take into consideration if there's not another space where maybe the masks can come down. Um, but yeah, I would hope that that the, the focus of the breathing deeply is to get that oxygen to the brain because that kind of kickstarts the, the internal mindful uh, reaction that literally causes your muscles to get this boost of oxygen and start to relax. Um, but if it doesn't feel like the students can breathe deeply with their masks on, that it might be something that has to wait. Or, or breathe a medium amount. <laughs> yes. um, and, you know, follow the rest of the prompts as you can. And um, watching those videos in Mind Yeti mm -hmm. and within Seesaw as a whole class to kind of model. I know um, a lot mm -hmm. of times, you know, we want to explicitly show students with our mouths and masks can make that difficult. But those um, watch videos within um, those Mind Yeti lessons can also support that. That's a very good point. All right. I think we may have answered all of, of the questions that we had in the Q&A. Great. So um, as we wrap up today, um, we would like to encourage you to think about how you can incorporate mindfulness into your daily routines and to try one of the Mind Yeti lessons um, that we share with you in your classroom in the next seven days. We would love for you to share with us on social media using the hashtag Seesaw or hashtag Seesaw Lessons and hashtag Mind Yeti. Once again, thank you all so much for joining us. And thank you, Casey, for sharing strategies to support mindfulness in the classroom. We would love to get everyone's feedback on today's session. So we will be sharing a link to a Google form in the chat um, for you to complete and provide feedback. Thank you. And thank you so much, Mia and the Seesaw team for hosting me. I love talking about mindfulness, if that wasn't clear already. And I was just so honored and thrilled to be able to talk with you all, our wonderful educators, about how to bring um, these skills to your classroom and to your experiences with your students. So I wish you the very best and feel free to reach out to me, too, if you have any follow up questions about mindfulness in the classroom. Thank you again, Casey. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. And we hope to see you again soon here at Seesaw.